the big German premium sedan test, Audi A4 versus BMW 3 Series versus Mercedes C-Class. Who will be the winner or who is a specialist in which segment or in which discipline? We'll find out here with Thomas and Audio for you in 4K, full screen, full length. Let's go. And the A4 would be some of the oldest model here in the test. Facelifted, meanwhile, has here this Quattro Citation here in the top. The typical Audi single frame grille here also blacked out. You can go for this option, but you don't have to. And a very interesting district green color for today. Whereas we have the Melbourne Red with the BMW 3 Series. So it's an Audi A4. 45 TSI versus a 330i. We have all comparable engine versions and all with all-wheel drive today. Here with the M Sport Pack and then you can also opt for an extended channel line that you also get the kidney in all the way in the black style. But again, you don't have to go for this one. Sporty accentuations in the lower part and here also with the most elaborated LED function here you also have these blue accentuations. A very sporty look both for the Audi and the BMW. With the Mercedes C-Class You can also take a look how the AMG line looks like. Then you have this micro star pattern actually in the front. The avant-garde line looks a little bit more subtle, but this new generation has the thing that even the base or the avant-garde line looks already sportier than the previous generation. So basically a sporty look for all of these ones. The AMG line may be a little bit sportier, but already from you know this wide perspective you see that the c-class always more goes into a more like elegant elaborate way whereas the audi and the bmw goes in a more sporty way so just from the exterior i would say sportiest sportier less sporty just from the visual part or what's your take and of course now exterior later interior at the end also i want to know which ones are your favorite length four meter 71 four meter 73 for the audi 4 meters 75 for the Mercedes or 185 inches, 186 inches for the Audi, 187 inches for the Mercedes. So, yeah, but they all are somewhat close. Design wise, the Mercedes has the most roundish design, you can see, most sensual design, I would say, and technology advantage, rear axle steering, so the rear axle option of course can go in the opposite direction than the front wheels gives you a massive advantage when parking in and out and also when doing a u-turn for example however the suspension is not adaptive but it has kind of you know like this selective frequency damping that although it's not actively adaptive it still acts like it is adaptive and we'll see in the driving part how the comfort plays out there mercedes bmw audi all come with 18 inch wheels here today and here the BMW with this M Sport package and also the extended shadow line we've seen the dark front grille you don't have to go for these ones but you can see here all blacked out in the most sinister styling actually and you have a more rectangular shape here if you compare it to the Mercedes C-Class for example and adaptive suspension is also available but already then with a little sportier note the Audi A4 here in the S line and then also optional with blacked out here everything and this has from the styling also a rather conservative note but once again more angular if you compare it to the C-Class. Which one do you like best in the side profile? The Audi also is available with an adaptive suspension if you like. We also have it here on the test vehicle for today. And once again you can show you another look at how the AMG line of the C-Class would look like from the side profile. Isn't it interesting how they all set a different design accentuation also here in the rear? They are somewhat all different, aren't they? Just what they have in common that the rear lamps are nowadays mostly horizontally drawn with modern automotive design. But once again, the Audi, more German Bauhaus style, angular. Same also with the BMW here, since the face also here with the more three-dimensional sculptural design. And the Mercedes, once again, the more round, sensual design. Which one is your favorite? Tell me in the comments. And out of the fake exhaust, please. <whistles> fake exhaust a lot. Definitely for the C-Class here, <laughs> for the Mercedes. The BMW, not at all. Of course, sometimes also BMW has fake exhaust. And with the Audi, it's something in between. 
fake exhaust tips, but the real one visible. Turning indicator comparison, interesting. The Mercedes has this vertical structure also. BMW with the widest signature. And the Audi, I think the point goes towards the Audi here because they have this cascading feature when you go for the optional matrix LED. The key fobs, very interesting in the comparison. The Mercedes one feels heaviest and most premium, but it's also the thickest then in this case. Maybe the Audi is a solution in between. Hmm, which one would you take? Door closing sound tests. BMW and Mercedes. Seats and seating position here in the C-Class. First of all, materials. This one here is animal skin pack. However, there are a lot of Artico or Ambitex choice available. So full leather red in different colors. And in Germany, you can also get a microfiber inset. The UK with the C-Class is restricted to animal skin, sadly. The position itself here is actually quite okay. I would say that the ergonomics for tall people is not that good. That could be a little bit better here, especially because they set this comfort focus actually. And then here, steering wheel in and out, manual position in this case, but smooth process. And very interesting is that you have the inside of the door control, which are now sadly only capacitive, only with the memory seat package. Other than that, when you have the more base package, then you have some electric controls in the lower part. Um, but the length then is manual. But I would prefer it actually to, you know, in, in comparison to the inside of the doors, things they used to be good, but now they don't move actually just on capacitive control. And I think then I would rather live like this. Interior cockpit overview of the C-Class with this vertical layout here of the huge screen. Temperature control is integrated right here. It also has this nice effect then with the air vents, for example. These are also a massive design element here and really beautiful with the mad wood. So have this sound effect then. And this high gloss black piano lacquer here, not a fan of it. However, you have two different options to get rid of that. Then you have like this aluminum mesh style, for example, in a brighter or darker one. I would advise you to go for that. And the steering wheel, yeah, with hashtag capacitive BS buttons on it. It looks cool, but then again, to control it while driving is hard. This one, the Avant-Garde, the AMG line would have the steering wheel a little bit sporty and with two horizontal spokes. And then you have these digital instruments here. They are very clear to read and also offer different stylings. Infotainment system up close here is easy manual structure sometimes could be a little bit quicker and more responsive but it's actually very clear for example here you can change this beautiful ambient light which also looks great at night of course when you change the colors here and the apple carplay integration or android auto is also full screen indeed and here we also have the optional burmester sound system which gives rather a pure sound not that bass intensive more like when you like puristic sound experience that's really cool low box nicely dampened here oh there's also this mercedes perfume inside if you like that it's an option <laughs> then you can also change the intensity intensity then here the middle console there's the slider and then you have place for your phone inductive charger made two usb-c chargers and these cup holders here not happy with them because when you have like a glass bottle or something a smaller one it doesn't hold them really tight However, happy here with the split armrest opening, typical Mercedes, and then two more USB-C chargers. Inside of the doors with the BMW, also soft touch materials here everywhere, and also the window controls here, everything looks like nice build quality. Seats here, the animal skin pack for the three series. However, base would be now perforated sensor tech, and they are also a little bit softer than. Seating position here in the three series. I have to say the seats are kind of small, at least for tall people. And well, from the headroom, it's no problem. But you know, here, this area, you know, like this hip area and so on. So I feel that ergonomic seating comfort wise, not super happy with that. The Audi is definitely better. With the C-Class, it's a little bit different in a way that when you first sit in it, you say like, ah, it's not that comfortable. But when you drive it for a longer time, it gets kind of okay. But here, not top of the game with the three series. BMW three series here since the facelift screen you have this one unit curved design 12.3 on the left 14.9 on the right and the manual ac unit is gone for that it looks cleaner but of course you have more controls in the screen however somewhat like a hybrid because here on the steering wheel we still have 
manual buttons also for the ACC and so on. So the BMW here positions itself from the user interface between the Audi and the Mercedes. You know, you have the BMW OS8 in, of course, visual, visualization wise, it's really impressive. The climate unit then here in the lower part, at least it always stays in one area as well. And this is the whole overview. The disadvantage is it's a little bit more complex. The advantage is that the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto connection is more stable, actually. So it is not, um, you know, that it loses connection or something, just more reliable than in the in the whole system. And the Harman Kardon sound system, by the way, I really like it. Um, it gives a sound that uh, fits very well to the BMW vehicle, I think digital instruments here they come alive when you start the engine and then you can also adjust them how you want to see or like which content you want to see in there and also I, I like the central position for the speed by the way and also the whole layout you can change as well and everything has this more modern touch where for example with the Audi it's more a classic layout and if you have the OS 8 system here with Android Auto you can get Google Maps from the right also to the left side and if you have CarPlay then the Apple Maps app can also appear here on the left side and you also get a header display here for the BMW. And storage space here middle console, couple adaptive inductive charging pad in the front. Difference is that here and without Apple CarPlay only wireless and not wired. I'm not sure if that's my favorite then. Here, since the facelift, the real shifting lever is gone. You have this more integrated solution. Looks cleaner, but also maybe less sporty feeling. But what I find cool is that you can still control the infotainment system, not only via touch, but also still here from below. This is a unique selling point here in this 3.3 three, and with 3 series comparison test. 3 car, 3 series comparison test, yes. <laughs> and then here, there's also actually substantial space underneath the middle console. Audi interior inside of the doors, nice microfiber right here. And also a microfiber seat, at least on the inside, available in Germany and in the UK. Or a full fabric as base seat, US, sadly only enameled skin. Seating position in the Audi to me is the best because the seats are most suitable to 1m89 or 6x2. <laughs> Headroom, no problem, but I think. They have best shoulder support. They are the widest, actually, so they enclose me the best, take pressure off the lower back area and so on. Interior overview of the Audi A4, also a very clean layout with my favorite AC unit with clicking sounds. <laughs> and then also here this brushed aluminum look, for example. Since the facelift, a 10-inch touchscreen the pre-facelift had no touchscreen then still the mmi knob in the lower part steering wheel is not too small but also like heated steering wheel button directly on steering wheel this is the theme of the audi a4 it's more this analog thing where you can still control more things yourself directly and i really have to say this is my favorite ac unit in the whole industry seat heating everything here nice clicking sounds and you can easily control that while driving. Infotainment system is somewhat the oldest in the test, but it also has a very clear menu structure. Could be a little bit quicker, of course. And then you can go for the Apple CarPlay integration or Android Auto, wireless or wired. You have the possibility to choose. And I really like that you have this volume jaw here at the steering wheel and also on the left side how you control the digital instruments the easiest and most straightforward way with once again click click nice clicking sounds digital instruments full screen or like this but that's only working for the car internal map and then you can click through different functions right here but it has a very good visualization and of course you can also get a head-up display cup holders good solution they're really adaptive then you have a small cubby hole right here well it's all close for them here in the rear headroom is no problem in the a4 but barely fits but then also here the knees in this recess yes but yeah also very close on the rear bench you have the same nice microfiber and the seating cupboard itself is also good but still not so much space although this is not a rear driven platform in most of the engines. Rear seating here of the C-Class. Well, legroom is limited. I would need to put the seat a little bit higher that the recess here fits better. Other than that, it's kind of cramped. Also here at the shoulder area, 
but the comfort itself is actually quite decent also a lot of headroom left even with 189 or 6 foot 2 and inside of the rear doors also good materials and so on so it's very good build quality just once again a lot of high gloss black piano lacquer in the rear here similar headroom also works but once again legroom closed so when you have me as a tall driver in the front it always gets closed in the rear so there's no clear winner as for that it's just that the bmw here has an especially large middle console so the middle seating here is um, also you know in a way blocked uh, but see for short ways it also works with five and now the trunk comparison oh. yeah my master has taught me very well to use the force <laughs> and then here the trunk of the a4 460 liters officially but when you look at the dimensions this looks really square so visually i think best usable they're all somewhat comparable in the leader figures. The BMW officially has the biggest leader figure at 500 liters, but then you have this step here raising towards the seats. The dimensions are all more or less the same, like a meter of 40 inches in width, a meter of 40 inches in length, and about 50 centimeters, a little bit more, or 20, 21 inches in height. This is all the same, basically. So more or less similar. The BMW has more space here, therefore also the leader figure, but the Audi to me more square dimensions, I think. And the Mercedes here somewhat in between, I would say, also with some space here. And then it gets a little bit narrower towards the wheel arches, so all more or less comparable. Mm, but I think maybe with the Audi then best. However, the Mercedes here, once again the theme that this is the Tech King, you can easily release the seats from here. Engines today, the most bought, most used ones, two liter four cylinders each. Audi and BMW also offer six cylinders. The C-Class now all about four cylinders, even in their performance model. And surprisingly, the Audi 45 TFSI is the strongest one with 265 horsepower, five and a half seconds in the acceleration figure. The BMW was, at least in Europe, detuned because of emission laws, 245 horsepower now and 6.1 seconds in the acceleration figure, so a little bit slower. And the Mercedes at 6 seconds in the acceleration figure, 258 horsepower plus the electric boost. Mild hybrid, of course, is also in this segment here now a thing. Both Mercedes and the BMW also have that, but overall they all come close in the acceleration figure. And you can get them either rear-wheel drive or, as we have them here today, all with the four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. But the main difference is Mercedes and BMW they have the rear wheel based platform, so the all wheel drive is always rear wheel biased, whereas the Audi in the smaller engines have a front wheel bias because of this Quattro Ultra. Welcome to Thomas's Comparison Driving Lounge, Mercedes C Class C300 Formatic, 40 kilometers an hour, German Autobahn. Let's go! And 200 kilometers an hour, there we go, it's actually well done. So the official figure is about 6 seconds for the C300 Formatic from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour, 60 miles an hour. Yeah, actually quite smooth and also here at higher speeds, good noise insulation, it's not loud at all indeed. Lane changes here, car's not shaking up too much. This is here a selective damping, that means it does not change according to the driving mode, but it constantly is somewhat adaptive in a way that it reacts on the different amplitudes you know, of the bumps. So the reason for that is they don't want to make an active adaptive system, basically to save money. But at the same time, when there are bumps in the road, it's comfortable, but when there's no bumps, it's basically stiff that you have more stability and that works very well and you've seen it here when we're on the motorway high speed wasn't shaking up too much so really happy with the suspension here although we didn't change anything from that um when <laughs> you go left and right and so on it doesn't give you the sportiest appearance but still it's not shaking up too much so i think they found a very good compromise 
This is equipped here with the rear axle steering option. And that one automatically adds the sportier suspension. So there are two suspensions, the base one and the sport suspension. And when you go for the rear axle steering, it automatically adds the sport, steering, uh, sport suspension that is a little bit lower, 50 millimeters. Um, but it doesn't feel uncomfortable. 18 inch wheels here with winter tires, so it's also a good choice. And here, this is also one of the advantages of the C-Class. Some might not like it. I found it very spectacular. Look at that ambient lighting. It's just awesome. And of course, you have this effect when you put it warmer or colder, that it also changes then according to the temperature. Really, really cool. I love it because it adds so much more emotion to the whole vehicle. Overall, as I said, this generation of the C-Class, if you compare it to the previous generation, has become sportier, definitely. Steering or suspension-wise, the steering input is more direct. I really like that now. And especially if you have the combination with the rear axle steering. So, recently talked to a Mercedes engineer, and it's the same actually for the GLC and also for the C-Class. When you have the rear axle steering, the steering itself is also more direct in every case. And that's a very cool thing, actually. Here at higher speeds, at speeds above 60 kilometers or above 37 miles per hour, the rear axle steering works in a way that it goes in a parallel direction to give you more stability. At lower speeds, we'll soon also do some winding corners. There, the rear axle steers in the opposite direction than the front wheels, giving you more agility and also reducing in turning. So, mild hybrid system so we also have a lot of start stop function here for example and when i have some roll or so it can also happen that the engine shuts off more so in the eco mode when you select that or also in the comfort mode and the engine itself is also pretty silent in the sport mode you have more sound amplification that's basically for all cars when you are you look at that i don't have to steer so much that's great so with past mercedes models we had to steer more than 90 degrees with the steering in a 90 degree bend. And here it was maybe exactly the same or maybe even a little bit less. So I really like the new steering characteristics here of this new generation C-Class. So I heard you wanted more nighttime driving. Well, we already have it here once again in the tunnel and this is the vehicle that really <laughs> shines indeed, literally if you compare it to the others, especially here in the nighttime tunnel driving part. We go once more to the sports mode. Um, you can see, you can also select here in the lower side view without touching the screen once again. And we go from 100 kilometers this time and accelerate it out. Nice high speed bend in here, 160. 80, that's enough for now, and then now lane change so tighter in the corner. Yeah, it's very good in the handling. Really not too stiff, so it doesn't get uncomfortable. It doesn't give you like the most controlled high speed feeling, but it's actually very well done. But still, you feel that the C class in this segment here is rather set on comfort than on sporty driving. But again, this new generation, if you compare it to the previous generation C class, is definitely way sportier but in comparison to the 3 series and the a4 the c-class still says like hey i'm you know want to go more in this elegant comfortable direction and i think that's also a good choice so here you have this combination of the ambient lighting the good comfortable suspension in any case but then again more driving fun here now with the new steering setup and this rear axle steering is, of course, a big technology advantage, at least if you went for this option. Of course, it always adds more cost, and the Mercedes prices are at least list prices. Usually always a little bit higher than the ones of BMW um, and Audi. Then they usually have more technology available, for example, so it always depends you know, what, what you need and what you want. Assistant systems, I put the cruise control and the lane keeping assist, the active one in. And here in this right band, see here, I'm not steering myself at the moment. I'm just here holding the steering wheel for security reason. That's how it's meant to be. And I test it here on this countryside road often because usually these systems are more laid out for the motorway, for the autobahn. There they also just have it easier. But here, when they do it here in a very good way, then they're really flawless and look at that how 
where this one was mastered. Blindspot monitor is also available here. Not too many systems are standard equipment. You always have to go for these optional. And now Agile Corner Run. Now we are in this moment where the rear axle steering helps. Yeah, really feel how the rear of the car is coming around a little bit. Maximum of 2.5 degrees. That's really, really cool. And once again, this new generation of the C-Class with the sport here, steering. Here really easy, nice rear wheel bias also of that all-wheel drive. So this is a rear wheel driven platform, so we also have a nice yeah coming out of the corners, very smooth also, no oversteering, no understeering, very good balance and also fun as for suspension. Engine sometimes feels a little bit mm, let's say yeah, not that calm, you know what I mean? I think that's a little bit better with the BMW. We're also looking for how that one will play out with the Audi. But here, definitely fun in the car. It's not too aggressive, very calm and collected at the same time. So yes, definitely sportier than before. At the same time, they are remaining this comfort and technology focus in driving. So this new generation C-Glass already set the bar quite high for the other two here in that driving part. Now to the BMW 330i, we put it to the sport mode, we can also go even sport plus, 40 km an hour, let's go. pretty loud in here so I feel that this one is louder than, than the two others at higher speeds and suspension is doing a great job it's actually the stiffest one in the test I feel yeah you feel it especially when you're going over these bumps in a very fast way so the BMW to me already right now seems to be the sportiest proposition in this test indeed so suspension laid out on the stiffest tone, the sportiest engine sound, especially with the sound amplification here in the sport mode. At the same time, the engine feels kind of most refined. That's interesting, although the Audi is a little bit quicker. However, the steering here, yeah, I have been criticizing that sometimes already with the 3 Series, it feels a little bit vague. Here in the sport mode is better, actually. But especially when you are in the normal comfort mode, for example, then it's just really loose, especially in this area. Here to the side, it gets better, but it feels kind of artificial. And I think the 3 Series, told it last time as well, 3 Series should be the benchmark for a natural steering with BMW. But it is the worst in the brand lineup, and I still don't get it. A BMW X5, for example, has a better steering feel than the BMW 3 Series, and that can't be. Yeah, it's not that it would be super bad or something, just I would have very high standards for the 3 Series as for the um, steering input. Really nice, you think the facelift here, and cool visualizations. Of course, it kind of communicates between both worlds. I already have that feeling in the interior, now also in driving. The Audi most conservative cockpit layout, you feel more analog also while driving, feel most in control of all the different controls. The BMW in between, a mix of analog and digital, and the Mercedes goes full digital. These are the three different things they have basically, and that also transports a little bit to driving. So when the steering input would also be the sportiest, which is not, then the BMW would be clearly the sportiest in every single aspect. But I think the BMW would need then the steering of the Audi or even of the Mercedes. Yeah, that's really interesting finding Mercedes C-Class in the new generation has a sportier steering than the BMW 3 Series. And what's going on here? I would have never thought that in the previous generation it was definitely the other way around. With the Mercedes definitely also due to the rear exit steering. Let's see how much 
do I have to put in here steering? Yeah, that's comparable to the Audi, I would say. So the Mercedes here even needs less steering input as far as I remember um, because of the rear axle steering. They're very, very interesting. Cool thing with the BMW is definitely sporty suspension and the nice engine sound and um, how the whole car reacts and also how rearable biased it is also even when you have all-wheel drive. The BMW is the vehicle that rather tempts you most to attack saying like hey please drive me right now drive me harder. Did I say that? So <laughs> let's go to the motorway once more and here for example now accelerating out of the corner ah, that's beautiful with the 3 series so accelerating out of the corner so we'll do another motorway run here high speed and then we will go some winding corners and there we will also then feel the difference to the Audi then uh, later on because the Audi has not a rear wheel bias with the all-wheel drive in the 2 liter engine and this will be different in another test we will also conduct at the later stage where we'll show you M340i versus C43 versus S4. That is also to come up on Autogefühl very soon, or maybe it's already online when you watch this review at a later stage. I will also link it on you. You can always just use the YouTube search like Autogefühl C43 or whatever you know, whatever model you uh, you you're searching. Put our channel name in a YouTube search and then the car model you are searching. And most of the models on the market we do have a full review of actually. Here inside the tunnel, by the way, some ambient lighting, yes. And here, once again, in the middle between Audi and Mercedes is the BMW with more visualizations, more facelift interior update, and so on. And a little bit more ambient lighting than the Audi, but not as much as with the Mercedes Sport Plus mode. And also, here you can always switch between D and S. The, um, the, the shifting mode here, you have to do it separately. In the Audi, it automatically goes from D to S then. Here, you have to do it separately. And we start at 80 kilometers an hour. Let's go. 120, oh, that's such a nice sound. 150. Also handles very well in that corner here. Good, stable feeling. A little bit rougher definitely than the other ones. Way rougher than the other ones from suspension. Yeah, I feel wind noise is higher, sound is more pronounced and sportier, suspension is stiffer, but the steering has less control. And the thing is, um, that's also one of the main reasons why this here feels, let's say, least in control. Again, all at a very high level, you know, all three sedans here, all three premium sedans set a very high level benchmark, definitely. But we are talking about the nuances of the differences because we all have them three on location here today. So when you think about um, how, much, how aggressive are the vehicles, then the C-Class is the least aggressive, more like what, what do the cars try to communicate to you? The C-Class tells me I'm sophisticated, you are sophisticated, chill, relax, lay back. Let me float you around a little bit. Um, I'm that setup for Alexa access, not complete, whatever. Um, so I'm that, you know, small S-Class and so on, and we are better than anyone else. And look at that, how my luxury ambient lighting feature and so on. The BMW definitely says like, what the hell with everyone else? You know, let's attack this road. Let's put me in the corners, drive me, drive me, drive me. And the Audi says like, hey, I want like, you know, straightforward controls. Uh, e everything should be straightforward and easy and you can drive me comfortable and sporty at the same time you know and I found that super interesting how when you directly drive these cars after each other you can literally feel these small nuances in what the car is trying to tell you this is super interesting yeah and that, that's also one of the reasons uh, why I love doing these comparison tests for you because even if I've driven all of these vehicles separately, sometimes there's some time in between and it's then really tough to remember from, from the core feeling how the difference was. But when you then drive them all after each other, then you also get these small nuances and then you can also profit from that. And it is always really hard to say this car is the best one 
but the most important thing is which of the features are most important to you. And here, for example, the assisted driving. Yeah, this one is very well done. Well, I mean, we are on the countryside road and steering is following everything perfectly. So this is also very well done here in the BMW. Yeah, I feel that the Mercedes and the BMW have something ahead of the Audi in that respect because the Audi is also the oldest vehicle. These assistance systems here are tuned a little bit more, um, you know, also everything is recognized from sensors and the camera and, and so on and so on. So this one is yeah, doing a great job. Let's see if this corner, yeah, here yeah, this corner is also mastered, whereas the Audi struggles with it, for example, you know, we, we, I can soon, soon show you that. Um, yeah, super interesting, definitely. So, seating comfort-wise, by the way, that is one drawback here of the BMW. At first, I thought that the Mercedes has the least seating comfort, just going in, out, in, out, in the static part. But when you drive the vehicle, actually, the BMW gets most uncomfortable from the seating ergonomics. Again, in the center tech, perforated center tech, the new material here for the 3 Series facelift also, you have better comfort because the material is softer than here the animal skin equipment. This will also improve comfort, so just stay with the base center tech seats and enjoy also this perforation, more breathability. But in general, from the ergonomics, the Audi is the best, and then the Mercedes, and then the BMW. Um, both BMW and Mercedes, I feel not too much laid out for people who are a little bit taller or as tall as me. That's better with the Audi, definitely. Interesting, by the way, because I criticized the steering input. You can either have a comfort setting or when you go into sport mode and everything goes sporty. But there's also configure individual. And then you can actually, for example, but that's only a sport individual mode, strangely. Why not? putting an individual separately but you can also select just different settings and then configure individual then you can select steering drive train transmission and so on and so on and now I have set for example everything on comfort but just the steering on sport and that way you can have a normal comfort mode but still with some more feedback in the steering strangely however and I just found out about that the steering then is a little bit more resistant or shows more resistance than in comfort. But when you then go from sport individual to the normal sport mode or even to sport plus, there's even more resistance. So you cannot pick the most or the highest resistance feel in the steering wheel by sport individual. That is obviously not possible. And I ask myself, why is that? You know, and that is not only possible automatically in the sport and sport plus mode where then you also have all other sporty features again. So I guess the best compromise is program sport individual, leave everything to comfort, but the steering wheel, then at least you have some more feeling in it. All right, now in these winding corners, and steering wheel not good. Whoa, that was some slip, interesting. So in the sport plus mode, more slip is allowed, but then again, also the ESP or is ruling also when you have too much slip. You can of course also deactivate these systems, but I don't do it here in public roads. Yeah, it's really a little bit slippery indeed in the sport plus mode. So let me just go to the normal sport mode. Maybe that's better than with a little less slip. Wow, interesting. Didn't expect that. So in here, yeah, out of the corners when you have enough traction, that's really cool then indeed. Again, the steering feel is not the best, but the vehicle itself conveys the most aggressive and, you know, let's drive feeling. So also chassis wise and how we can get out of the corners with such a rear wheel bias always. Of course, either in the pure rear wheel drive version or then still with the real wheel bias. Also when you have the all wheel drive version. And now to the Audi A4, we put it to the dynamic mode here, 265 horsepower, also puts it to the S shifting mode. And this one's supposed to be the quickest of the three. Let's see, let's let this other car pass and then we'll start from 40 kilometers an hour and accelerate it out. All right, ready? Let's go. Okay. 
120, 150, 160. I have to cancel it now for safety reasons. This Q8 in front of us blocked us. Here we go now, now from 130. Sixty really has a good punch still. Wow. And now 200 kilometers an hour, 125 miles an hour, and really stable here also. Great job from that adaptive suspension in the sports mode, giving me more feedback. Wow, this feels really everything feels like kind of like integrated. You feel very much connected to the vehicle. That is great actually. Wow, super interesting. Um, yeah, and indeed, it is a little bit quicker. It's not that the, like, engine-wise, the best feeling gives you the BMW engine. Maybe also because of the sound they give on the inside or something. The BMW engine feels at least most refined, but definitely here the Audi one is the quickest. Yeah, super interesting. Of course, when you're accelerating straight out, you don't really feel a big effect of this thing that this one here in the Audi is not a rear wheel drive engine. They just, just have that for the three liter, six cylinder petrol and diesel, where you have the standard Quattro Overdrive 40 60 split. Here in the two liter engines, this Quattro Ultra where you have predominantly front-wheel drive and on-demand also rear-wheel drive. Here, by the way, also in the tunnel, you see difference then to the Mercedes where everything is <laughs> shining all over the place with the ambient lighting. And here, rather subtle drawn back, which is the basic theme of this interior, that everything is more subtle and more conservative indeed. And that can be a good or a bad thing it really depends on your preference. Um, as for the all-wheel drive setup, this will be very interesting soon when we go a little bit more agile corners and accelerate out of the corners. If this one still has a significant effect, then if that's maybe worse or something. Um, here, by the way, again from the steering input, very likable. The thing is, the BMW to me is the worst steering input in the test indeed. And that shouldn't be the case, right? So, you know, BMW has done a lot of things very well in recent models, definitely. You can argue about some <laughs> double kidneys in the front, but the steering input in the 3 Series is still something I think it needs to be fixed because it's better in, there in the BMW SUVs. And the Audi always had a great steering input. Now, let's take a look here, 90 degrees bent. See here turn a little more than 90 degrees but feels really natural and progressive but the surprising thing here is now with the new generation of the c-class the steering input in the c-class especially when you have the rear axis steering is I, I actually have to say it's probably even better and that is a surprising result because so far the Mercedes steering inputs were more like a out for running straight and you have to steer a lot but this combination, new generation C-Class with the rear axis steering, is even better in steering than the Audi. Super surprising result here, and you only feel it when you directly drive them after each other. That's pre pretty, pretty amazing indeed, because you've maybe seen in that exact bend we've just been turning, I had to steer the, when I say C-Class steering, I think it was like this or something, and the Audi had, like, they had to do like this. Yeah, super interesting indeed. However, the steering input here in the Audi is still very likable and gives you a very good feeling of the vehicle. And the seating position also has a massive impact on driving here. So the Audi from all three vehicles has the best seats, I have to say, from the ergonomics. BMW, meanwhile, offers the best uh, materials, I think, with the perforated sensor tech. Here, the Dynamica microfiber, of course, is also really good in the Audi. But the ergonomics here, at least, is laid out best for tall drivers like me. Um, and in the C-Class, the seats are just too small. And I think the ergonomics of the three-seat seats, like the, the base seat that is underneath, you know, the form, could be better. So the Audi here leads it for me as for the seating comfort. And that also 
gives you a different driving feeling. You feel like you can drive a longer way without back pain and so on. And also I have more shoulder support and that also helps in sporty driving. So the new C-Class generation is definitely sportier than before and also a lot of fun to drive. But here due to the you know, more integrated seating position here, you more feel like you would be owning this vehicle. You, you know what I mean? Like you are in control of this vehicle. And um, yeah, I came to a similar conclusion in direct comparison A4 C-Class. C-Class is always more a little bit of being driven and A4 is you drive that vehicle. That can be good or bad, depending on what you want, actually. One more time, let's go to the dynamic mode. Drive select, yes, and then as shifting mode is activated, when we start from 90 kilometers an hour, let's go. Wow, it feels so nice here in that long band. I'm still accelerating. And once again, 200 kilometers an hour. Wow, good feedback from suspension. Wind noise wise, they are all good indeed. I don't know, what, what do you think also from the camera? Could it be that the C-Class has a slight advantage there? Maybe, right? But really hard to differentiate. Wow, it's really good here from the turning left and right and I think it's a very interesting thing that the C-Class does not have an adaptive suspension. It sounds like but it's not and the BMW and the Audi they do offer that and the big difference is that it is stiffer than in the sports mode and more comfortable in the normal mode. However the Mercedes suspension is so good that it kind of fulfills both because they have this these um, you know frequency selective dampers that are also although they're not actively controlled still act in an adaptive way and still the c-class especially when you don't pick the sport suspension which i would not recommend for the c-class stick with the base suspension with the c-class the c-class more gives you like a let's say like a floating feeling on the road more like hey i'm inspired by the s-class and i want to be most comfortable and luxurious Whereas the BMW and the Audi say like, hey, we have this adaptive suspension technology, we try to go, we want to serve both. We want to be comfortable and sporty at the same time, but we more go in a little bit sporty direction. And the C-Class, especially with the non-sport suspension, more goes like, hey, you know, I'm too sophisticated for that to go into that sports game, you know. And that is again a thing, I'll also talk about that in the conclusion very soon, that you, can, you can't really say with a lot of aspects about that, like, this is bad or this is good. It's more about what do you expect from the vehicle and what you appreciate most about individual aspects. We're going to talk about that in depth again in the, uh, in the conclusion. This will be super interesting. Oh, there's a C-Class. Hey, C-Class. Will the C-Class follow me? I guess. <laughs> to, once again, to our review location. <laughs> um, do you think that hey Mercedes reacted in that moment in the, in the vehicle? <laughs> yeah, um, assistance systems, let's test that one here in the Audi. So I'll go back also to the, taking some time to react sometimes. So the auto mode, then setting the cruise control, separate stock column at the steering wheel. And then I can also set here at the stock column the active lane keeping assist. and. This is also pretty easy and straightforward control. Let's see now on the countryside road how the steering wheel is reacting. So far, so smooth. Frequent subscribers they, or viewers know, or you know then, that I tend to test it here and not on the outer one where it's meant to be because here it's even more tricky, you know? It's meant to be tested on the Autobahn usually, or used on the Autobahn usually, but here in these, yeah, you see here, that at some point the system fails, and some vehicles are so sophisticated in the assistance systems that they master also countryside road to keep it still like half autonomously. Here it works well, but I feel that the systems in the newer vehicles, I mean, 3 Series has been facelifted, also later C-Class all new generation, there the assistance systems are already a little bit more sophisticated. But once again, that doesn't mean that it's the ideal thing for you, because the thing is, yeah, that might not be to your liking. 
because <laughs> when the assistance system is more sophisticated, it also means in some point you are less in control. And there is the big question again, what do you like best? To be more in control of the vehicle or to have more guidance in the vehicle? Now the question is also with that all-wheel drive thing, how does the A4 perform in winding corners? All right, let's pull it here into the corners. Also suspension here. This is in stiffer mode, but then the road gets very rough. Yeah, I, I think this time I feel that the C-Class just gives more comfort on uneven roads. And you know, accelerating out. You know, the steering wheel doesn't get too light, so there's no significant understeering or something. But you do feel a little bit that it's front wheel bias. Let's see here once more again. Yeah, a little bit, but actually not too much. So I think although they don't have the rear wheel driven platform, yeah, a little bit. So you feel that, that the front wheels are pulling a little bit more in comparison to the others. Um, so it is more fun with the rear wheel driven platforms accelerating out. However, as for the general agility feeling, like left and right, the driving dynamics from the vehicle, the A4 is also fantastic. And you know? then with the steering input that is really cool once again, it's a lot of fun. And also again, it plays a role that you feel so much integrated in the vehicle. So yeah, I mean, driving fun-wise, I think the most ideal thing would be when you would have the A4 handling with the drivetrain of the C-Class or the BMW or something, you know? So, um, yeah, and there you see where, where we might have a problem in concisely deciding. They all have so much to offer in the individual factors. <sighs> so what we're going to do now? Wow, super interesting to directly drive all of these three cars after each other. First of all, all three of them are very elaborated, are definitely awesome vehicles, no doubt about that. What do they have in common? The consumption for these engines here, the two liter four cylinders with all wheel drive each, almost the same, all around nine liters on one kilometer, so 26 mpg US, 31 mpg UK. But what are the differences? The A4, definitely has a sporty look. On the interior, the unique feature is that it has the most direct, most conservative user interface. To me, also still easiest to control, like an 80s analog stereo, where you also have a sound feedback and so on. And at the same time, you also have, to me, the best seating comfort, actually, especially for tall people. Then again, in driving, you don't have a rear wheel bias with this 2.0-liter 4-cylinder engine. That might be one of the disadvantages, actually. But still, a very agile driving feeling, quite silent also on the Autobahn, and surprisingly also with the quickest acceleration figure. The BMW actually tells me most like, hey, I want to be driven, let's have fun. It has some kind of the most aggressive driving characteristics, also most slip at the rear axle and so on. So this one more the driver's focused car. The Audi tries to go in this balance, you know, between sportiness and comfort. The BMW most goes in the sport direction. The suspension, even when you have the adaptive one, is the stiffest in the test. So everything's set on the sporty note with the BMW. And when you think about the brand values, that kind of also fits. So really, it's so interesting what these cars are trying to tell us. The Audi Audi tells us, I want to combine sportiness and comfort. The BMW says, sportiness, let's go. Also from the exterior and so on. Seating comfort to me, sadly, the least comfortable from the seat ergonomics. However, they offer nice perforated sensor tech material as for the surface. When we think about the Mercedes, you have a very stylish exterior, definitely, no matter if Avantgarde or AMG line. The interior is the most digital one, whereas the BMW tries to communicate between both worlds, is like a combination of analog and digital with this facelift, this new dash and so on. The Mercedes goes all the way digital, most controls then in the screen and so on. And it is a mo the most impressive car in this test, definitely. Infotainment system and also the ambient lighting looks so cool. It has the most most features that you can show off to your friends. That's also very interesting, isn't it? And I really love to drive with this ambient lighting in the night, for example. Interesting is that it doesn't have a real adaptive suspension. However, the suspension is so cool, it 
kind of gives you this floating effect. It does share parts with the Mercedes S-Class and it indeed feels like driving a small S-Class. So the C-Class goes more in this elaborate, more comfortable position and that also fits the brand core image indeed. The downside is of course that it might be a little bit more complicated as for the user interface. Then again, this high-tech vehicle approach, for example, this one offers the rear axle steering, which helps so much when parking in and out and being more agile, U-turning and so on. So the C-Class is the technology king here of this review. Comfort-wise, I would say from the seating comfort between the two ones. Yeah, so it is really hard to pick a concise winner. The thing is, they all have their unique position. The Audi, to me, the unique position straightforward user interface, comfort and sportiness combined, and to me also most comfortable as for the seating. The BMW, kind of like the, the sports king, I would say, of this review, but then with some compromises to the comfort. And the Mercedes, the technology king here in this review. And of course, with this, you know, most showing off effect. And now the question is, which one of these aspects is most important to you? So I would not really say that one is better than the other one. The question is really what is the focus? And th let's say with the C-Class, at first, um, and also when I did the first comparison test, I was a little bit more skeptical, but the longer you drive it, the more you like it and the more you get used to the features which were a little bit more complicated at first and so on, and the more you enjoy also this suspension which is giving you this floating feeling. The BMW is really when you want this sporty non-compromise, I would say. <sighs> but, I mean, when I have to decide right now, it's really, really tough. So, to me, there's no clear winner. All of them have their special features. Um, to me, the thing is that the seating comfort is extremely important. That's what I really appreciate about the A4. But I was also surprised by the Mercedes. The steering input together with the rear axle steering was also the best in the test done here. So, hmm. Wait, before you decide, let's talk about pricing as well. So they all, of course, also come kind of close and it depends on the trims and what extra equipment you put in there. But when we take these concise test vehicles here for today, interesting thing is 70,000 euros, 80,000 euros, 70,000 euros. Usually the Mercedes are most expensive, but although they have like rear axle steering inside and so on, the BMW has some of most equipment from the extra prices and is indeed way more expensive. So again, it depends on the options list, but as they stand here right now, would you have guessed that this one is the most expensive one? So I would actually decide between the Mercedes and the Audi, and I really enjoy the Mercedes and also the ambient lighting and the technology, but I think due to the seat and comfort and the straightforward user interface, I would personally lean towards the Audi, but again, that's not that it's the better vehicle, it's just that my personal preference, it is more important to have the best seat and comfort and the overall best compromise of comfort and sportiness. But the more I have been driving the C-Class, it also gave me, hey, maybe I should then go for the C-Class. So really complicated. This is my very, very close call for today. It's just that the BMW is actually in this segment here, not the one I would pick here today. That's to me actually pretty sure. In other segments, for example, recently we had the result where the BMW was the clear winner. So you see these premium manufacturers here in Germany, they come so close that also the comparison results are also always very, very close. What do you think? Tell me your choice and why in the comments and see you at more of our comparison reviews.